Good evening, everyone. Uh, we will start promptly at five o'clock. So in a couple minutes, we will get started with the Distance Learning Academy uh, webinar, parent webinar. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the Distance Learning Academy Parent webinar. Um, I'm Anthony Patternis, the Executive Director of Technology for Osseo Area Schools, and I have been facilitating uh, the development and planning around the Distance Learning Academy for the school year. And so I will be uh, your host tonight uh, as, I, as I go through some information related to the Distance Learning Academy. Um, if you hear some dinging as we're getting started here, um, it's individuals still jumping onto the webinar. Um, we are letting them in as they uh, keep requesting in. A few housekeeping things that I would like to go over tonight as we get started. Um, so first, this meeting is being recorded. Um, I would ask that you all please mute your microphones. Uh, that will help with uh, the sound and the ability for everyone to um, hear as we continue to move forward through this webinar tonight. Uh, as a note, to the right, you will see on your screen there is a chat box uh, feature. We will be utilizing that chat box uh, for questions as we go through the presentation. So please feel free to uh, go in that chat box as we're going through different items and put questions in. Uh, we'll get through as many questions as we possibly can tonight. Uh, any questions we don't get to, we will capture in that chat box and we will be working on a um, frequently asked questions or question and answer response that we will provide uh, through our website and through further communication out to families as well. So I would like to first start by uh, welcoming all of you to the Distance Learning Academy and um, our, our upcoming school year. We are looking forward uh, to uh, engaging with your young scholars uh, through our Distance Learning Academy program this year. A few overview pieces for our Distance Learning Academy, and I'll let each of these individuals uh, unmute uh, themselves and introduce themselves. But we do have two dedicated uh, administrators that uh, will be uh, working with our staff and your young scholars as we go through the school year. So Ryan Bisson is the elementary assistant principal, and I'll let her unmute herself and uh, do a quick introduction. 
Thanks, Anthony. Um, hi, Distance Learning Academy parents and families and scholars, if you're out there. Uh, my name is Ryan Bisson. I've been with Osseo Area Schools now for 16 years, um, have taught multiple grade levels, and more recently have focused on um, teacher training and staff development. I am so excited to begin this journey with you all in the Distance Learning Academy. Can't wait to meet you. And Ben Carls is our secondary assistant principal, and I'll let him uh, unmute and introduce himself. Hi, my name is Ben Carls. I am the secondary assistant principal of 6 through 12, so I'll be working with our middle school scholars and families and our high school scholars and families. This is my 18th year in the district, I believe. I started at Northview Middle School and then was at Osseo Senior High for the past 12 years, working as an English teacher and working as a staff development specialist focusing on digital learning and creating our online academy. Um, so I just want to welcome you and I'm excited to work with you and our scholars and see what we can do be excellent with each other. So as we move forward through the school year, you will uh, receive and see many communications coming from Ryan and Ben. Um, in particular, as we go through the next uh, the week, as we get ready for the start of school year on the 14th. Um, looking at some of those things like supply lists and information regarding uh, student schedules and uh, teacher assignments, which we'll talk about tonight as well. If you're trying to reach out uh, to the Distance Learning Academy, we have an email account um, that we ask that you email to, dla at district279.org. And the phone number for the Distance Learning Academy is 763-391-8670. Those two contact uh, uh, informations will remain uh, the same throughout the entire school year. Um, so those are, are the ways that you can reach the Distance Learning Academy. Um, currently, right now, just uh, to, to be very transparent, we're seeing a large volume of, of uh, inquiries coming into our email and phone line. So uh, please be patient as we work through uh, all of the um, uh, questions and, and communications that are coming in as we, we get a response. Uh, the other big item for the Distance Learning Academy is that our school day does have a start and end time and we'll talk more about the schedule and the beginning and end times as well. Um, but the school start day is 8.30 a.m. and our school end day is at 3 p.m. and that is for all students K through 12 uh, in the Distance Learning Academy. So what can scholars expect in our Distance Learning Academy? So first, uh, they will check in daily for attendance with each of their teachers or teacher. Uh, we uh, expect that scholars will fully participate in scheduled academic classes. We expect scholars complete their work in a timely manner. We expect that our scholars follow Osseo Area Schools technology expectations and that they have a dedicated area to complete schoolwork and tasks at home. So really when we think about um, having the experience of being an online learner and how do we set our students up for success is really finding that space uh, in the home, whether it's you know the kitchen table or a, a dedicated space within, within their, their bedroom, um, that when they're there, they know that that is the schoolwork space and time. DLA attendance. So I know we've had some questions around attendance. Um, so uh, our scholars must check in, as I mentioned earlier, to every class uh, uh, every day. And that attendance will be taken by either participating in live lessons, which we'll, we'll talk about what that means and looks like in a little bit here, um, engaging in digital activities or turning and or turning in work on a daily basis. If a child is unable to attend learning for a day, parents and guardians should report absences to the Distance Learning Academy. So just like at a physical school, we will be taking attendance on a daily basis and marking students as present or absent. 
And um, as we do with our normal brick and mortar schools, uh, attendance is important and unexcused absences will follow Hennepin County Be at Schools truancy program. So all district policies, uh, county and state rules around attendance still apply to students within the Distance Learning Academy. Um, as a note, an unexcused day is noted if the scholar does not engage with the learning and the family has not reported the absence to the Distance Learning Academy with an excusable reason. reason. So just like during a normal school year, if your student is unable to attend um, school for whatever reason, we ask that you call and report that absence to the Distance Learning Academy so we can indicate the absence appropriately. Uh, elementary schedule. So we're gonna, we've got a lot of families on here. Some are elementary level and some are secondary level. So we're gonna break into some different chunks as we go through the day. Um, and so if we start with elementary schedule, this gives you a picture of what the day and the weekly experience will look like um, for our scholars at the elementary level. So again, we start the day at 8.30, and every day, Monday through Friday, our, our young uh, elementary students, uh, K through five, will start the day with a 20-minute morning meeting. Well, they'll come together as a whole class um, through Google Meets and uh, uh, engage with their teacher. Uh, then the day will break up into uh, different segments, and you'll notice they're all broken down into what we call 50-minute blocks and different types of learning activities will take place during those, those blocks. Um, it is going to be a combination of live learning, um, small group activities, independent work time. Uh, we'll have some uh, engaged live lessons with uh, intervention, uh, uh, talented and gifted, so TAG, um, as well as our specialists will have time in here, so PE and music. Uh, fifth grade will have still have the opportunity for orchestra and band, so that would be potentially tagged in on one of these days, um, as, as well as in the afternoon when we get to the very end of the day from 2.40 to 3, every day, Monday through Friday, will be an afternoon check-in. So just like a morning meeting, we're going to close the day with a 20-minute afternoon check-in with the uh, entire class. You'll notice that Mondays through Thursdays looks very similar uh, with the live instruction and small groups and the independent work time broken in there. Fridays are going to be slightly different where there's more independent work time and more small group and intervention work um, that will take place on Fridays as opposed to large whole class uh, live lessons. Again, on Friday, the, the day will start with a morning meeting and close with an afternoon check-in for 20 minutes on each day. Um, very similar, but in different block chunks is our secondary schedule. So this would be all our students uh, in grades six through 12. Uh, every day from 8.30 to 8.50, all students grades six through 12 will participate in a morning advisory. Um, this again will be done through Google Meets and will be live with the teacher and their advisory class and is an opportunity again for small groups to check in with, with a, 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 an advisory teacher and assist them with any questions that they're currently having while they're navigating the learning to be successful in Distance Learning Academy. Um, as well as time to work and build, just like at the elementary level, on social, emotional um, relationship and community building uh, within our school. Um, what may look very different um, on our daily schedule is we're running a more traditional block schedule. So we do, there are school districts in Minnesota that run um, what's called a block schedule. Uh, for our, our uh, high school students, you might be more familiar with this because many of our high schools do run a modified block schedule. So every day is broken up into uh, four 80-minute periods. And our first three uh, uh, blocks of the day will have some form of live synchronous learning that occurs with the subject areas that are associated with each of those periods. So uh, when you do get your schedules, you'll see your schedule is like a six period day. And that's how you'll be able to align Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday as to which classes will be having live synchronous lessons. The last block of the day, uh, block four, 
is where students will attend and check in with their other three classes in an asynchronous format or a non-live format. And that's very intentional to have that on block four uh, for flexibility within this schedule uh, because our, our scholars and students are still able to connect with their homeschools, extracurricular activities and athletic um, uh, teams if they so choose to participate. And I know that many of our secondary sites, uh, uh, school days end earlier. So those activities that might start um, before the three o'clock end day, this allows for some flexibility for a student to be able to go and engage with those extracurricular opportunities. So if we talk about instruction and what the learning experience might look like, um, when we talk about live or synchronous instruction in the schedule, uh, this is where teachers will provide what we call live mini lessons during this time, and they'll be um, uh, available live and in person. Uh, we do not uh, uh, suspect that at the secondary level in an 80-minute block that a teacher will provide a, a whole 80-minute live lesson. Um, our teachers will break that 80-minute time period down into a variety of, of different experiences for our student. So it might start with a 20-minute live lesson with the whole group to provide some direct instruction on um, what they're learning in that class, whether it be math, science, or reading. And then they might have the students break out into small uh, work groups or do some guided practice and independent works where they'll check out of that Google Meet, they'll go do a different activity related to that course, and then they'll come back at the end for maybe a 10, 15 minute um, whole class check back in within that, that time period. At our elementary level where we have our 50 minute uh, uh, live lesson blocks, uh, a teacher might not be on a Google meet for an entire 50 minutes with students. They might start that 50 minute block again with a, with a short 15, 20 minute whole class live lesson and then break the class into some smaller groups um, where they'll work on some again guided practice or some um, sample problems similar to what they're learning and then come back for the last five, 10 minutes of that 50 minute period to recheck back in as an entire class. When we talk about independent or asynchronous instruction within our daily schedule, and this is where there's flexibility in how students navigate and take this time, um, but these independent or asynchronous activities will be developed by the teachers and provided in either Seesaw at the elementary level or Schoology at the secondary level. And they can include a variety of different activities. So some of them may be digital activities. So yeah, um, IXL Math and IXL Reading is a, is a program that many of you may have engaged with in the past. Um, that might be a program that a teacher uses during that independent time for students to practice their, their math and their reading. New ZLA is another digital program or resource that a teacher may use to engage with um, students for some of that independent practice time. Some teachers may have created pre-recorded videos of specific content pieces uh, for students to engage with uh, during that independent time. As well as our teachers are really cognizant and aware of thinking about what is that balanced approach between how much time students are in front of screens versus how much time they're not in front of screens. So they might have additional or independent reading activities or independent non-technology activities like uh, doing some problems out of a textbook, working within a workbook. We'll talk about curriculum materials shortly, uh, but we will be providing uh, our scholars who need um, um, curriculum resources and materials to be successful at home with those materials at home as well. Uh, I'm going to pause right here for a second and seeing several questions come in to the, the, the um, chat box to see if we can get some of those answers. I can jump in, Anthony, and answer a few um, that are related to elementary. 
I see one question about expectations for independent learning for elementary school or for elementary students. Um, our teachers are preparing visual directions, audio directions, um, as Anthony had mentioned, before we um, release our scholars into any kind of independent activity, there would be modeled directions. So every um, scholar could be successful and teachers could be available in a small group or um, in a message within Seesaw for um, support for your learner at home. I see a question in here related to the time from I have eight, uh, 8.30 to the 3 p.m. and the flexibility that might be in there. Um, this one is specific to elementary, but it actually applies to elementary and secondary within this schedule. Um, so our expectation for attendance is that students engage with all of their classes through that digital platform of Seesaw or Schoology at some point during the day to get attendance. So if that happens to be, um, you know, 3.30, 4 o'clock, as long as they're getting in engaging with the materials, that will account for the attendance piece. The 8.30 to 3 instructional time frame is really when teachers are available and providing those live synchronous learning opportunities. So when teachers do provide those live um, learning opportunities, they will record them and post them into Seesaw or Schoology so students can, can engage them. Um, at a later point um, during the day and rewatch them. What you know won't necessarily be able to take place if it's outside of 8.30 to 3 is when our teachers break into small groups with students or run some of those live intervention groups. Um, those are really crucial that you know students participate within that 8.30 to 3 uh, o'clock time frame in order to connect with their peers in that, that live fashion. Um, but in terms of accessibility, uh, students will have the entire day to check in with those materials um, and, and, and process through the learning. So if, if families or parents need to provide additional support or choose to provide additional support, um, we really are driving to create an experience where uh, our teachers and our staff can help facilitate the learning. And our, our real expectation for um, our parents and guardians is to create that learning space in the home that will support our children and our students to be successful as they go through their, their learning in this uh, distance learning academy. Um, live sessions. So this is a little bit more on what's going to happen and some expectations around this. So you'll notice that uh, every day, Monday through Thursday, there'll be live synchronous lessons that are provided K through 12. Opportunities, again, for students to connect in real time with their teachers and their peers within uh, their classes. Um, during this time, it's important that scholars remember this is like attending physical school. So remember our, our dress codes and our dress policies, uh, dress appropriate for live classes, understand your surrounding areas, and again, have that dedicated area to work within the home. Um, we know that for younger scholars, parents may help them set up for the day. However, it is important that the child takes ownership in their learning for the day. Again, we're really trying to build um, that, that community and relationship of learners and building um, that relationship with the teachers and their, their student peers in the class to, to really engage in the learning and support each other in that learning process. So I'm gonna go over some very specific things related to Distance Learning Academy that applies to all of K through 12, and then we'll have some specifics around elementary and secondary. So first, uh, curricular material distribution will occur later in September. So I mentioned earlier that um, things like textbooks, um, some literacy books, Bridges math books, uh, benchmark literacy materials, potentially some math man manipulatives at the elementary level. We're working to put all of those pieces together and we will be having a curriculum distribution day later in September. So right now what we're working on is putting together uh, grade level kits for each of our grades. So, you know, a first grade uh, curriculum material kit, 
kit, a second grade curriculum material kit. And then at our secondary levels, uh, we'll be working with putting together course specific kits together. So if you have a student taking an art class and there are some art materials that they potentially need, um, we'll be putting together some art kits that we will make sure that we distribute out to all of our students. Our first two weeks of school, when we start September 14th, um, we really are driving home with our teachers um, to spend time working on building relationships and community with our students. This is a new learning experience and a new learning format that our students will be engaged in for the whole year. And uh, building community and relationships and understanding routines in a digital uh, learning environment is essential for us to be successful uh, as we continue to move forward. So that's really what teachers are really looking at. How do we focus around those opportunities to build community and relationships and understand routines within the digital um, learning space, whether that's navigating through Schoology courses, um, helping students learn and understand how to navigate through Seesaw courses at the elementary level. Um, we'll be spending a lot of time with that. So really digging into curriculum towards the end of September um, which is how we'll align and make sure that we have those curriculum materials out there uh, to align with that. Uh, technology pickup. So every student in the Distance Learning Academy and uh, across Osseo area schools uh, will is assigned and will receive a one-to-one uh, -one technology. So K through three, so our K kindergarten through third graders, that's an iPad, and fourth grade through 12th grade, that's a Chromebook. The large distribution days occurred at your home schools uh, on the first and the second. You should have received communication from your home school principal um, regarding those distributions. Uh, we know that uh, it did not necessarily work for all families to, to get their device at that time. Um, so we will be providing out additional communication uh, related to additional opportunities next week when you may be able to get those devices as well as we are looking at opportunities for uh, transportation to deliver some of those devices as well. Uh, class ratios at all of our uh, grade levels and classes will be following the same class size ratios that we see in our physical sites. So if you think uh, to elementary level and your elementary students experience, if they were in a physical school, their classroom size is gonna look relatively similar to what you would expect if you were in a physical classroom. The same with our secondary classes. Um, we will, uh, the, the classrooms at the secondary level with each course will be following um, the similar class size ratios that we see at the secondary level. Uh, scholars will still have access to and can participate in their homeschool extracurriculars. So I mentioned that as we were looking at the secondary schedule and the intentionality behind why that last block of the day um, is uh, an independent uh, work time to create that greater flexibility if students need to go and attend their uh, extracurricular um, activity with their homeschool. I'll pause there and I see some questions coming in. Um, what exactly is the class size ratio? So at the elementary level, um, off the top of my head, I don't know, but it, it changes from each grade. Um, I believe at kindergarten, it's, it's somewhere in the low to mid 20s. And then by fifth grade, you get um, towards the upper 20s. Um, in sixth through 12th grade, um, it's about 33 to 35 per student is the, the average class size at the secondary level. Um, other questions, Ryan, Ben, do you see any other questions coming in that we haven't touched in either in the chat box or gone through yet? I know there are some questions concerning how schedules will be pushed out. I know from the secondary level, we traditionally have pushed them out using parent view. Um, we are working on the secondary schedules right now as we speak in rosters. So those will come out as soon as we can. Um, I also see uh, questions about, um, I just wanna see, Jennifer, I do see your question about uh, a scholar who has connect and will they be working directly with their caseworkers. We are also finalizing our um, SPED and EL assignments as we uh, have, several hundred scholars who fall into both categories and we are going to get that information 
out to you guys as soon as possible so we can connect families with the appropriate case manager and supports. Yeah, I will add to that in case anyone is wondering, all special education, ELL services, 504 plans, um, as well as when we think about um, our scholars um, that qualify uh, for talent and gifted at the elementary level, all of those services will continue to be provided in the Distance Learning Academy. Um, I see a few questions around um, uh, Chromebooks at the ninth grade. Um, uh, yes, we had one particular site uh, where they ran short. Uh, those device, those students who did not, were not able to get a device uh, at the pickup. We, you will be getting contacted directly to be able to get your Chromebook or your device. So every student will get access to a device prior to the start of the school year. Um, I see a question about secondary. Will they still be able to participate in art? Uh, yes, uh, students will still be participating in art. Um, as a whole, our Distance Learning Academy has approximately 5,000 students in it. Um, so that has created a, a, a wonderful opportunity for a, a wide range of electives and opportunities across uh, the entire academy. So um, in particular at the secondary level, um, at, at the high school level, we have many AP and many HP courses that are still running. Uh, many of our art electives are still running, Tech Ed, Project Lead the Way. Um, at the middle school level, um, our advanced courses, uh, advanced math, um, those courses are still running. Students will get access to them. Band, choir, and orchestra, uh, fifth grade through 12th grade are still going to continue to run and be offered as well. Um, so there are um, many, many opportunities that um, we're able to build into the schedules that uh, we didn't necessarily anticipate at the very beginning. Um, some additional DLA specifics. Uh, technology supports will be provided through DLA. Um, if you have your device now and are uh, running into some technology challenges, you can uh, always email help, H-E-L-P, at district279.org. That is our district IT help desk. Um, that will generate a help desk ticket and will be assigned to a technician to assist. Um, we're putting together the technology support team for the Distance Learning Academy uh, right now. So as we have more specifics about uh, DLA-specific tech supports, uh, we will be providing additional communication around uh, that as well. Our scholars in DLA will still participate in district-wide state assessments. Uh, so I know we've had some questions over the last few weeks from families around this. Uh, so at the elementary level, uh, we have district-wide assessments called um, um, for progress monitoring that all, all our young scholars will still continue to participate in. At the third grade level, all students uh, take the Colgate assessment, which is one of our assessments that we use for identifying talented and gifted programming. Um, at the uh, senior level, AC seniors uh, missed the opportunity or because of uh, the situation last spring, um, juniors typically would all take the ACT. Um, that has been extended to all seniors this fall. So we are working with uh, the senior ACT opportunity and students in DLA that are 12th graders will have the opportunity to um, take the ACT this fall, just like the peers within their um, physical sites, um, and then our state assessments with the Minnesota Comprehensive Assessment. So as long as those assessments are running and the state doesn't cancel them, um, all our DLA students third grade through 11th grade or um, 12th grade if they're taking biology in 12th grade um, will uh, be taking those, those state assessments. Um, all course content and materials for learning will be the same as at the physical site. So we're using the same curriculum. So at elementary, you know, our Bridges Math, our Balanced Literacy. Um, uh, at our secondary sites, the same math, science, reading, social studies curriculum that is being used at the physical sites is also being used within the Distance Learning Academy as well. 
uh, school conferences, and we'll we'll have some uh, further dates around uh, open house and beginning of the year meetings um, coming up shortly in our presentation. Um, but during the school year, conferences will continue to occur just like they would at a physical site, except they will be done through a virtual format. Uh, as those conference dates get uh, mapped out on the calendar, uh, we will get those dates uh, uh, sent out to families as well as looking at the um, opportunity for signing up for those conferences as we get close to those conference times. I'll pause there and see if there's any other questions that, um, were, that are coming in through the chat box. Anthony, there's questions about the IB program. Yes, so unfortunately we are not off, uh, able to offer any IB courses. Um, um, in this, in the Distance Learning Academy program. Um, what we are looking is students who are in an IB course, uh, we are mapping that to the equivalent uh, rigor course uh, within the secondary level, which may be an HP course or an AP course. Um, we know, I, we do know we have some seniors that are working on their IB diploma. Um, and we are examining the opportunity to still ensure that our scholars who um, are seeking an IDB diploma will still um, meet all the requirements for getting that IB diploma. So again, 12th graders who are looking at getting their IB diploma um, that are in the program, uh, we will be connecting and working uh, with, with the scholars to, to ensure, that, ensure that, that, that that opportunity is still there. Still there. Okay. Other questions, Ryan, Ben, that you might be seeing? Yes, questions about the school supply list for elementary. Our teachers were working hard at finalizing those and they are ready to be posted. So Anthony and I will work together to get that posted on the DLA website this evening. And we will also work to be sending out a communication um, either later this week or early next week with uh, information around those class lists as well. Um, but we will have them posted, as Ryan said, on the website this evening. I see a question. I believe it's in regards to a dedicated teacher for our DLA scholars at the elementary level. Um, as, as Anthony described, it's... Um, just a different mode of learning, but it is set up just like any other elementary school where they will have a core teacher and they will go to FIED and music. So yes, in the elementary level, there will be one dedicated teacher. At the secondary level, we don't have one dedicated teacher because the scholars will transfer between different courses taught by licensed teachers. So for instance, the typical scholar will have English classes with an English teacher, math classes with a math teacher, social studies, science, as well as whatever electives they've chosen. For six through 12, we have a variety of electives, tech ed, facts, art, bi ed, health, other requirements as well. So they will have licensed teachers in those areas teaching them just as they would in a physical in-class school. It's just in a different model. And teacher assignments um, will be ready, um, I believe on the, the next slide. Um, so we'll jump ahead maybe, but anticipated September 9th. Yep. I see a question in here about lunches. Um, we will be sending out some communication um, in the coming week around lunch service. So lunches will still continue to be provided for all DLA students um, through a combination of uh, ability to pick it up from the homeschool, as well as a lunch delivery that will occur once a week where we deliver five days worth of, of uh, meals uh, at that time. So a, a Additional information will be coming from our food and nutrition team around uh, lunch services for um, DLA students. Uh, question in here around IEPs. Uh, IEPs will continue to be handled the same way they would at a physical school. Um, so students will be assigned a case manager. Case managers will reach out uh, with the student and review IEPs um, and ensure that um, the IEP as it exists will still meet the needs with, with the Distance Learning Academy um, and process through with the family if, uh, if additional modifications may need to be um, made as well. 
So if we jump ahead to the elementary specific slide, um, as uh, Ryan mentioned, teacher assignments. I know many of you are waiting for teacher assignments. We anticipate to have those uh, ready to go and live September 9th, uh, Parent View. They will be posted in Parent View. Um, the same with secondary schedules when we talk about secondary in a second. Um, as you can imagine, uh, we have uh, a quarter of the student population and about 25% of the teaching staff that moved into this program. Um, so we've been working very quickly, at, at, or as quickly as we can, to get all the students um, assigned to teachers. And um, once we know the teachers, get teachers uh, aligned to the classes that they will be teaching. Um, so we are working through that uh, very quickly and again anticipate to have those classroom lists by September 9th. Um, virtual open house, I will let Ryan speak to that a little bit, but that will be coming up next Thursday. Yes, we are finalizing details on a virtual open house that will be held via Google Meet um, next Thursday, September 10th from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Once we have um, this information finalized, we will be sending it out as soon as possible. Um, and that goes along with teacher assignments. Um, so they're a little hand in hand, but we are working as fast as we can to make sure um, you have that information. Um, elementary supplies, we mentioned as well that we're going to get those posted. I know we have a few questions about secondary supplies. Um, we are still working through um, the needs around secondary supplies. If there are uh, items needed more than, you know, traditional notebook and pens and pencils. Um, and we will uh, get those posted soon. And again, when we send a communication out early next week, uh, we will remind for both um, school supply lists, uh, what is needed and, and where you can find those and how they're available. Um, Seesaw, I've seen a few questions as well around Seesaw. So Seesaw in K through 5 is the primary um, digital classroom tool, if, if you will. Um, so that is the tool that teachers will be using to create their digital learning space and be able to post their assignments um, as well as their, their virtual meeting links and, and all of those uh, pieces as well. I got some questions in here, Ryan, uh, about uh, virtual open house. Are there any more uh, details as to what that might look like or what they can expect? Yes. Um, so the current structure um, that we're planning around is a rotation, if you will, of um, a third of the class will um, be invited to join the classroom teacher for a, a little overview and a welcome, a meet and greet, if you will. And so we'll space those out so they're smaller and um, we can focus on um, you know, really meeting each other through this virtual environment. Um, I see a question here about students having to be in class throughout the whole 8.30 to 3 o'clock time. Um, so again, for attendance purposes, a student uh, doesn't have to be uh, engaged in that specific 8.30 to 3 o'clock time, but they do need to check in digitally to every one of their um, uh, courses at the secondary level or with their elementary teacher um, uh, at classroom at some point uh, during the day to get marked as present. That 8.30 to 3 time is the time when teachers will be available for live instruction and live lessons. So again, to be able to engage with that learning in real time and to be able to engage with your teacher and ask questions in real time and to work with um, uh, students uh, in, in small collaborative groups during that time, um, those that will all be occurring within that 8.30 to 3 o'clock time frame, which really builds the rich learning experiences for our, for our students. Okay, let's look at the secondary specifics. Um, so uh, secondary sites, if you're new to secondary, they don't really have a, a, what's called an open house, which you would experience at the elementary level. Um, we do what's called fall student learning conferences. So just like at all of our physical sites, we will also be running fall student learning conferences um, in a virtual format. 
Um, these will occur on September 16th from 4 to 7. And Ben, do you have any in additional details at this time to provide related to those fall student learning conferences? The conferences will run from 4 to 7. We will start with uh, a message from myself and any other admin that would like to be there. And then we'll have you run through your scholar schedule. Now, I do see a question. Uh, if you have multiple scholars in the secondary level, how do you run through their uh, schedule? That is a great question. Um, because we have six through twelve, especially there are going to be those opportunities. There are going to be those chances for us to not be able to have that. Each class will have twenty minutes, so um, it is possible if you are not able to meet with the teacher. Much like if you came to learning conferences at the high school and you had multiple high school scholars at the physical school and you weren't able to make it, just reach out to the teacher that you had and say I wasn't able to be there, and they will communicate with you anything that you missed and anything that they want you to know. Um, Sometimes it's also good to divide and conquer if you or and another adult or parent or even the scholar can make it to those classes to meet their different teachers. I would recommend that just so the you know more we can build those relationships and meet the teacher, meet the parents, and build that community of support. That would be wonderful. Um, during those times, they'll talk about the expectations, what you can expect of them as a teacher, what they expect from the scholars. They might share with you what their daily class might look like. So they might say, yes, we are gonna be doing synchronous lessons where I'm giving you lecture and you can ask questions, or it might be, I will front load stuff the night before and give you time to watch it at your leisure at home and then I will be there to answer questions. It depends on the course, it depends on the teacher. So I strongly recommend being able to uh, touch base with them and learn about how that would be successful. Science labs, I do see that health science magnet, science labs, um, we are working on what the logistics of science labs would look like. But I can say that we uh, are not the health science magnet program. So you will, your place will be held at Osseo Senior if you are part of the health science magnet. And we have courses being taught by teachers that are the same course or similar courses to what are being taught at Osseo Senior High as the health science magnet. But unfortunately, we are not in the magnet itself. But we can work with the coordinator at Osseo Senior High with whom I've worked closely many years about making sure that your work here is part of that discussion and making sure that the credit is given for the work you do during this year. Um, class schedules at the secondary level, so 6 through 12, as Ben mentioned earlier, we are working through all of those class schedules right now and teacher assignments to all the courses that they will be teaching. Um, we anticipate to have the class schedules live and available to families um, by September 10th. Um, I, and again, Schoology in grades 6 through 12 is our primary digital classroom tool. So that is the tool that teachers will be building out their digital version or virtual version of their classroom for connecting uh, via, via live sessions, providing the assignments, um, um, and, and small group activities uh, will all be facilitated through the Schoology platform. Um, I see a question in here around, and I've seen a few questions around uh, shifting to hybrid later in the year. Um, the Distance Learning Academy is the year long um, online experience for students. Um, so, you know, when the sign up uh, was first posted, it was posted as a year long commitment. There will be transition points at each of the trimester periods um, if families uh, find that. Um, a different learning environment may be needed. It will be done through a, a, an application process in advance of the trimester. Um, those requests are not going to be guaranteed or will not be guaranteed because it is very dependent on ensuring that um, a, a scholar that wants to transition back into a physical site, whether it's hybrid or in person or the mode that the the homeschool is operating is that they have the staffing and um, the safety precautions in place that can handle additional students coming in. Um, when we're in hybrid mode, we've got a 50% capacity limit on sites and transportation. And we, um, again, have shifted teachers all around the district. So we wanna make sure that we set our, our students up for success um, if they're going to make that transition um, so that they have a teacher and they can safely go back into a, a physical learning space if, if that is to occur. Um, parent and family toolkit. Uh, I'm going to turn to the next slide and I'm going to turn this over to uh, Ryan to share uh, a lot of the work that has happened over the summer to really provide additional resources for families to help support 
um, them to be successful with, with their young scholars through this online learning environment. Thank you, Anthony. Um, this is a project that I am very proud of. Um, in response to um, your feedback from the family survey last spring, um, the Department of Learning and Achievement has created a website for support for at-home learning. So it is called the Parent and Family Toolkit. You will find this at Restart district279.org. And what you will find here are resources, videos, guidance, um, links for support for all of our curriculum, reading, math, science, um, and links for core tools um, such as Seesaw in elementary. In secondary, um, resources on this site will include ideas for daily schedules. How do I support reading at home? How to set up a learning environment? As well as um, core tool support in Schoology. So we're very excited. Um, this came out last week. So um, go visit and walk through with your scholar because it's everything they will be experiencing as well. Thank you. Um, and so now, uh, with the remaining time, we'll uh, open it up for additional questions. Um, so if you have a question, please put it in the chat box. We'll get through as many as we can uh, with the remaining time that we have. Uh, ben, do you see any questions that you were following in the chat? Yes, there are a few questions about as the other sites shift between hybrid, in-person, distance, how will that affect DLA? And the answer to that is the DLA is its own school and we will be distance learning the whole year. So what the other sites are doing, if they're shift, for instance, right now they're in hybrid, if they shift to distance, we'll still be doing distance. If they shift back to hybrid, we're still doing distance. So that is one piece there. And the class registration is based on tallies that were done for last spring. So in February, when the secondary scholars were signed up for their courses, we are basing class tallies on what they signed up for in the spring. Calling for absences, we have the attendance line and we will also be pushing out, uh, registering your attendance absence online as well for an easier mode of communicating that. And we'll have additional uh, communication regarding the attendance line um, and the online format that, that Ben is mentioning um, as, as uh, in, the, in the coming week as well. Um, orchestra, I've seen a few questions about how will band and orchestra work. Um, so our music teachers have really been thinking through um, a lot of creative ways of how to make a very rich um, experience for our orchestra, band, and choral students. Um, so I don't have specifics on how that would necessarily look, um, but I know they're very excited to still be able to offer the opportunity. Um, I know that they will be working with the students who are registered in um, music and orchestra um, for if you need a district instrument. Um, so uh, that process will be coming from our music department as we continue to um, uh, move forward as well. Other questions, Ryan or Ben, do you see one in there? Yeah, I saw one about um, class sizes. So um, the Distance Learning Academy is creating their class sizes that are um, similar to a class size if you were um, in a building, brick and mortar. So in the elementary, um, it's any, depending on grade level, it's anywhere from 24 um, in, the, in the early grades and then moving up to 30 in the older grades, um, 6, 12. I can't speak to that. I'm more elementary. Um, and there's another one. Um, we are working hard on organizing students um, so that they are with like schools. Um, so we are working on um, making sure that they might, yes, that they are with their um as many homeschool students. Um, so if you're from Oakview, we're trying to group you with some Oakview students, um, but it will also be a mix, not just an Oakview class, for an example. 
Um, I see a question about being logged in during the day. Um, so at, if when we look at the elementary schedule and I'll kind of jump back quickly to that schedule. So the expectation is that students are not on their screen that entire time between 8.30 and 3. They will have various points throughout that day where they will log back in to um, their classroom um, with their classroom teacher. So if we look at uh, Monday, for example, um, they'll log in in the morning for their morning meeting time from 8.30 to 8.20. Um, and then from 8.50 to 10.30, uh, this is set up as live learning, guided practice, uh, small group instruction. So a student will not necessarily be logged in to live instruction for that entire um, 100 minutes segment during that time. What will occur is a teacher might start at 8.50 and do a 20 minute live lesson with the whole class and then ask the students to log off and go potentially independently read um, uh, 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 an article or a paragraph or, or you know, do something in a Bridges Math workbook or a balanced literacy worksheet that they will have provided. And then might have them come back, um, you know, at, at a half an hour later and check back in as a whole class uh, to see how they did on that guided practice. Uh, they might have students break out into small um, work groups where well, they will be logged in at that time to be able to connect with their peers and work through an activity. Um, and then they might come back and check in as a whole class. Uh, those independent work times that you'll see built in throughout that schedule, that is time that is um, not designated to be logged in with a live lesson occurring during that time. So there's a variety of different uh, teacher directed activities that will occur in those independent um, time slots. Uh, some of them may involve um, engaging with, with a digital resource, and some of them might be completely absent of a digital resource. So if we think about specialists, dollar specialists will still be running. So for a PE class, um, the PE teacher might have some physical activity that they would uh, be directing them to do during that time that's not near a screen, whether it's um, run around the house or uh, uh, do something um, that gets them up and moving um, that helps them with physical activity. Uh, so that's how it's going to be chunked out during the day. Um, our grade level teams of teachers are looking at what does that mean and how much time do they actually have students spend with the screens so that they're taking into consideration um, developmental appropriateness. Um, so as, again, students progress and get older, they will probably have uh, more time that they're checked in and live uh, with students uh, uh, through, uh, through the learning. Now, there, we, the, this is an online program, so students will have to engage um, with digital devices and um, engage um, in online activities more so than they potentially would if they're in a physical brick and mortar classroom setting. Um, and it's, it's really about, um, you know, the, this, this, the mode of teaching is through an online format to deliver that instruction uh, to our students. Uh, the live uh, learning in small groups, that will occur through Google Meets. So uh, in that, um, the parent uh, resource that Ryan talked about, uh, there's a section in there around our core application tools. So we've spent a lot of time with our teachers to uh, stick or stay within our core application tools. So at the elementary level, that would be Seesaw as the classroom tool. Uh, Google Meets would be the video conferencing tool. And then our G Suite, um, which is Google Docs, Google Slides, so kind of the equivalent to Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, are the other core digital tools that teachers will engage with on a very regular basis um, to make sure that our students are successful. Other questions, Ryan or Ben, that you saw? 
Uh, I know that there are questions about the live learning. Yes, we, we will be using Google Meet. So scholars will need to, uh, at the secondary level with their Chromebooks, log into their Google Apps account, Osseo Apps account. And that's how teachers will be conducting their live sessions, their synchronous sessions. Um, scheduling questions about what electives they'll be taking. So scholars registered for classes last spring and winter. And so we are basing our classes based on those tallies. So they've already signed up for the classes they'll be taking. And yes, a few of you have asked about can, uh, can they do clubs and activities at their home, well, you know, at the school. We don't have real estate, so we don't actually have a site, but they are able to engage in activities at the site that they would have gone to. So for instance, if they wanted to go to like, if Osseo Senior High, for instance, happens to have homecoming and they wanted to go to the dance, they can certainly go to that dance. Um, or if they want to engage in like clubs that Osseo Senior High or any of the other sites might have had, they can engage in those. That is not, they're not forbidden from doing that by being in the DLA. And the same with middle school clubs. So if you're, you know, there's a club, if you're a, a student originally would be a part of uh, Brooklyn Middle or Maple Grove Middle School or Northview Middle School, and they have an extracurricular club or activity, um, your students can fully engage and still participate with their home schools, extracurricular uh, clubs and activities. There was a question in the chat about um, students and scholars having access one-to-one um, -one with their teachers. Um, something that we are working with all of our K-12 teachers around and that they are very excited about is building relationships with your scholars. So many opportunities for authentic assessment, um, such as your scholar um, doing a, a read aloud into a seesaw video and then sending that to the teacher and then the teacher could have um, direct feedback. Um, to your student or um, conferring. So that same kind of um, outcome, which is a teacher listening to your child read, um, could happen in a Google Meet in a one-to-one. -one. So you'll see a lot of that um, live instruction small group. That's where our teachers are going to focus on building those relationships and providing your scholar with the support that they need. Um, some clarification on classes that they signed up for at the secondary level. So this would have been at their home school. So Maple Grove Senior High, Park Center, Osseo Senior High, Maple Grove Senior, Northview, Brooklyn Middle, um, or Osseo Middle. So in December, February, or no, February, January, they would have completed a course registration opportunity at their home school. And it's those course registrations or course requests that students requested um, then that we are using to build out the course offerings for the Distance Learning Academy. I know there are some secondary parents asking about if, for instance, the classes they signed up for are not offered. Um, so we had alternates when they were registering. So we will look to first to see if the alternate choices are being offered. So let's say, for instance, you signed up for, I'm just going to go with, um, History of the American West, and we don't offer that, but we do offer sociology, and that was one of your alternate choices, then the scholar will be placed in that preferential rank that they did. And uh, we are aware also, we are working on, once we get our schedules and everything, mas uh, our master schedules and rosters and everyone figured out and we get that communicated out, we are already thinking and talking about how to get picture day figured out, as well as uh, yearbooks and all those other things that make the school fun, and we are, that is on our radar. Uh, I see a question in there about physical materials for uh, writing packets, uh, Bridges Math. So uh, yes, earlier I had mentioned we're working on curriculum um, material packets. So we are looking at those Bridges materials and those balanced literacy materials and getting those packaged. Uh, we'll be looking at distributing those physical materials to students for at-home learning uh, towards the end of September. And additional communication will come out um, as we uh, get those packaged and ready to go for your scholars to be successful. It is 6.01. Uh, I appreciate everybody's time uh, coming on and engaging with us tonight through uh, this parent webinar for our Distance Learning Academy. Um, we thank you for um, your patience as we've been going through um, all of this process and, and set up for this school year. Um, uh, again, this is recorded. We will get this posted onto our website. So if you or others you are talking to who are part of the Distance Learning Academy want to refer back to this uh, webinar, um, you'll have that uh, available as well. 
Um, we look forward to the great learning opportunities that can happen. And uh, thank you, and have a great night. Yes. 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 Yes.